Keith, this is awfully early in the season, but it, this game is really being touted almost as if it's uh, playoff time already, the, the atmosphere and everything surrounding it. Steve, it's a confidence builder for the winner, or even uh, for both if, if it's a good close game. Uh, for UNLV to come in here and, and if they can beat them again, uh, and they've been doing it lately, uh, to beat a Pac-10 team is always a big win. Uh, for Arizona, uh, they're young people that they've got to depend on. If they can get a win off uh, UNLV, then their confidence level goes up high and their conference play starts next week. And uh, kind of interesting, last night, I, I, uh, this week, we've seen Oregon State come down, you know, the good old plotting, slow kind of Oregon State attitude. Well, they came down to Los Angeles, beat Loyola Marymount, scored 100 points, and held Loyola 100. So things are changing in the Pac-10, and uh, it looks to me like uh, a UNLV's conference. Big West is going to be pretty good this year, too. So they're not out of the woods, whoever wins here, but uh, these two schools have got something going uh, called Prestige, and it looks to me like it's just going to get more and more and more so. Uh -huh. This is a funny question, but is it is it easier or tougher to do, say, an early season game as opposed to a late season game, maybe when, you know, we're getting close to tournament time? Well, you know, at this point, Luke doesn't really know what his people can do and doesn't have the right combination, maybe, or he's still searching for it. Jerry certainly is still searching for his. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony's been out of control a couple of times. I thought uh, Tark was going to strangle him a couple of times in a way, but... Uh, uh, it's a matter of getting all of this talent and ability and enthusiasm channeled into the right combination. And you're not going to have that before end of February. Righty, thanks a lot. Okay. You know, Pete, he had a block. Yeah. Rosenbaugh will be definitely Luke be said he had a block. That's another bonus. For another one, maybe. The talk really said he had a verbal commitment for the kid, right? Right. Okay. Hey, I'm not like him doing things for nothing. I'm going to do an interview. You're going to show my book to the Vegas people because I read about your boy Twark. Just call people to buy it. Go ahead. What do you want? I happen to have a book on it. <laughs> How do you see this, this matchup? A couple of teams maybe that really haven't fine-tuned yet. How do you see it? Well, I think you're looking at two of the better basketball teams in America. Talent-wise, uh, I think both clubs are going to get better. I think you look at Vegas, you're seeing six new kids out of eight players. So it's a matter of familiarity. The same could apply for Arizona, losing Kerr, McMillan, and also losing uh, Tolbert on the inside. But you still have a fine nucleus to build around with an LEA with a cook and you look at Vegas with a Stacy Ogman and people like that I, interesting matchup I think for an early season matchup we got two coaches mm -hmm. that are considered to be two of the Rose races we have a defensive specialist in Ogman who makes the Olympic team mm -hmm. and we have a kid Sean Elliott who doesn't make the Olympic team and they're going to play head to head so I think it's an interesting matchup okay what about the just the coaching styles everybody knows Tark wants to run well, uh, and about Tark's pressure defense and Luke's not quite known for running to the extent that Tark is but Maybe well, I think I think the great thing about Jerry Tarkanian as a coach, John Wooden told me this one time, and when Coach Wooden speaks, you listen. Coach Wooden said that Jerry Tarkanian is the only man he can remember that has been able to go from a patient offense and a zone defense at Long Beach State and make the transition and go to a run, press, and shoot style of play and win, and win big. And he's done that at Vegas. Lute Olsen is a guy that believes in a great team concept. They share the ball. Everybody plays together. They have roles on the floor. He defines for each player a role. I think the key for the Arizona team, if they're going to be able to really play with the big boy, at the end will be whether or not Sean Rooks, the big strong kid they have, can develop to be a player. If he can give him an extra big body inside to move the kid Cook out to the forward spot, I think then you're going to see this team really make a lot of noise. Pac-10 has really improved. I've been one of its biggest critics, but I have to be very honest about it. When you look at Stanford, I mean, I know they have two losses, but they lose on a road to Carolina and to Indiana. Uh, you look at, for example, uh, Keith was telling you earlier, you look at uh, Oregon State State beating a Loyola Marymount, you look at a Washington beating a DePaul, beating a Colorado. We know about Arizona, we know UCLA, Jimmy Herrick's got them going in a positive way. Uh, they're really playing well, UCLA. So I think that's great for the West Coast that they're starting to keep kids home, and I think that's important. Thanks, Lauren, Dick. No problem. Jerry Reed's that column, he's going to... I think it's the other one. There's a guy named Greg Nance. Yeah, there you go. He also ripped him on yesterday. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. The one where they showed on CBS. He was refereeing. He was the Oklahoma game. He was there. He was just 
Oh, I saw the game. 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 I saw the game.